Welcome to Reddit on Reddit, the internet's auditory version of Reddit. I'm Nelson Allingham, joined by Michael Cambo Campbell. Do you know, I had a, had a crushing realization. I'm going to start with a real downer in my life. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's good. Let's start with that. About when you don't think you're getting older, but then suddenly realize you are. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, this actually happened a few weeks ago. This is over the Easter weekend. Yeah. Some friends of ours went away. Yeah. And Stacey and I stayed home. Mm. And then she showed me this uh, this like video message she got from their friends group. Yeah. And they're at the holiday house that they owned, and they're doing Easter egg hunts with their kids. And she's yeah. like, "This is crazy." When we were younger, mm. that was like the party house, right? Yeah. And now look, they're like they're like you know, doing Easter egg hunts with yeah. kids and stuff like that. Like, man, they they're getting old. Yeah. Yeah. And then no shit, less than an hour, we were both out in the garden. Yeah. Being like, "Well, it's a Sunday. We've got extra garden time." <laughs> yeah. We should. And then. And it, Halfway through that, I was like, you know, snipping the lawn, being like, oh no, we're, we're no better. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're just old in like a different way. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, go go do a shoey or something. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that youth back into you. But not the good shoes. I need them for work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and you know what? Not a shoe, a glass. Not inside. I've just. Cleaned. And make it a nice Pinot Noir. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's funny because I just did the same thing the other day. Um, I went away for the week, Easter yeah. weekend. We went sort of uh, went away, northern like, to the Victoria. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty. pretty that far is out. a sign of getting old. Is, is wanting to get away <laughs> to the country. Yeah, that's true. I'll, I'll admit that it was. You know, it wasn't my idea. It was my uh, partner's parents' idea. And yeah. Whatever. But it was a really uh, nice, fancy place. It was one of those locations where you kind of. It was kind of like between towns. Yeah. Um, and it was just like one property on stilts on a hill. Yeah. Overlooking this awesome landscape. And there's like barely any houses around. So it was really cool. Uh, and heaps of kangaroos, actually. Mm. Uh, just but, like everywhere. Just like everywhere in Australia. But here, times that by two. Oh. Mm. Uh, but what was uh, funny was I ended up taking like a panorama of the landscape in front of us. <laughs> oh, no, you are getting old. And then I sent it to <laughs> my family. And then I was showing some friends the other night. I was like, hey, this is where we went. I, I don't have any other photos. <laughs> no, I have one photo of Ellen in like a field of grass. It looks quite nice. And this landscape. And that's the only photos I took the entire weekend. But, but also, have you ever seen someone's panoramic landscape photo of a holiday and gone, that's amazing? I know. I even <laughs> knew it as I was taking it. I was even like, this is nobody's going to look at this and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah wow. really. I'm having the same experience that you're having when you saw it. Uh, I knew that was going to happen, but I did it anyway. That's and the then thing. I even had to explain to these friends. I was like, because I showed them and they're like, oh, yeah, it's really nice. And I was like, no, but like, it was such an interesting landscape. I was like, <laughs> it wasn't just that, you know, it was nice, like a horizon or whatever. There was like these hills that were kind of close and then it got further back as the lake went around and then yeah. there was some like kind of mid range hills. And, and if I was you're like, really, really interesting, if you, if you really pinch in to the panoramic, you can kind of see that. Yeah. So really, it's captured it. It's pretty good. Um, so anyway. That we're both old. Yeah. I guess. We're both hurtling towards middle age and it terrifies us. Yeah. But we still do uh, shoeys. Go on Reddit and do shoeys. Yeah, yeah. We do shoeys. Obviously not inside because we've just cleaned. Yeah, yeah. And from a glass and it's a nice pin of It's a nice, <laughs> nice pin of And that's... Uh, that's shoeys. <laughs> that's shoeys. Oh, yeah. For <laughs> American <laughs> listeners, that's what a shoey is, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get into it. This first Reddit on Reddit is by care representative 31 and it was in the subreddit am i the asshole <laughs> uh the title is am i the asshole for bringing a raccoon to my sister's <laughs> way <laughs> i did see this title <laughs> i can't yeah. see a way that they're not so i'm excited to hear the explanation i disagree when i first read this title i was like brilliant this is so good weddings traditionally boring yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bringing a raccoon that's a party uh, so this happened last week in it, and I'm still getting angry texts from my family. Let me explain. <laughs> I, just like so I just forgot that beep, that was beep, part of it. Beep, yeah. Beep. yeah. He looks at it. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh. You're like, God damn it, dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I have a pet raccoon named Pebble. Okay. I was going to say great name for a raccoon. Yeah. Great name. Yeah. Uh, he's very friendly and well-trained and I love him like a son. That's <laughs> 
Again, okay, you guys, yes. I shouldn't laugh. It, you know, it, takes it does all kinds. seem funny, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, okay. He goes everywhere with me, and he has his own harness and leash. Like a son. <laughs> like a son. He is also vaccinated and has all the necessary papers. Okay. Yep. I don't know what necessary papers you would need for yeah, record. Yeah. What is, is this, like, war-torn Poland? Yeah. Show me your papers. Is it like an endangered, and or not endangered, but like an animal that you're like, well, technically you shouldn't, but because you... you oh, I mean, like a monkey or something. In specific right? circumstances, yeah. you've managed to... You find you found the loophole to keep this raccoon as your own. Yeah. Uh, here's the paper to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> I was invited to my sister's wedding, which was held at a fancy hotel. Mm-hmm. I asked her if I could bring Pebble, and she said no. Okay. She said it was... <laughs> yeah, we've got it. We've got pretty much all the information yeah. we need already, <laughs> but... <laughs> I may as well keep reading. <laughs> she just said it was inappropriate and disrespectful yes. uh-huh. to bring a wild animal uh-huh. to such an important event. Yeah. She also said that some of the guests might be allergic or scared of him. I uh, yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. First, uh, just as a mild defense. Yeah. Okay. At what point um, does a pet become a, a, a domesticated animal? Uh, look, you, you know me. I love dogs. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. At my wedding, if someone said, can I bring my dog? I'd say no. No, but would you call it... Sorry, I'm specifically but, talking about calling it a wild animal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's a wild animal. But one, I think weddings are about the people who are getting married. Yeah, yeah. So if they do want or don't want something, yeah. then you should probably abide by that. All I'm and trying two, to do... I yeah. would say regular pets aren't allowed, let alone yeah. irregular pets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, all I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to do... I kids, honestly. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> all I'm trying to do is... Is I've got a tally board, uh-huh. and I'm trying to put points. Yeah, right. You know, on the yeah. on OP side. His sister has you. multiple points at the moment. We're trying yeah. to at least get him one. Get him one. So hey, we'll say, don't call you know his pet raccoon a wild animal. Yeah, yeah. That's one for you, buddy. That's one for you. Uh, okay. Uh, I was hurt by her response. Yeah, yeah. she called him a wild animal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's his son. <laughs> <But> I- <laughs> But I didn't want to argue with her. Okay. I decided to respect her wishes and leave Pebble at home with a friend. Yeah. However, mm. on the day of the wedding, my friend called me and said that he had an emergency and couldn't take care of Pebble. Okay. I <laughs> look. No, no, you know what? Keep reading. Yeah. Okay. They might explain my next question. Uh, probably not. I panicked. Mm-hmm. I didn't have anyone else who could watch Pebble. Yeah. And I didn't want to leave him alone in my apartment. Why? I <laughs> we'll see. Which is my question, by I, the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why can't you leave it alone? Yeah, but that was hours. everybody's question. <laughs> at the title, people were yeah, wondering, yeah, yeah, yeah. why couldn't you leave this raccoon at home? Uh, <laughs> um, Would you leave your son at home? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> um. Uh, I, I and I didn't want to leave him alone in my apartment. I also didn't want to miss my sister's wedding, uh-huh. so I had decided to bring Pebble <laughs> with me. Okay. Yep. I thought it wouldn't be a big deal. Um. I put him in his harness mm. and leash and put a bow tie on him to make him oh, look more formal. Well, okay, one that's for him. adorable. He, he, Another mark tried. on the board. He's you know what? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. good. By the way, she has ten. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We haven't been putting this one yeah. out because they're so <laughs> obvious. <laughs> But a cute raccoon with a bow tie. That's one for you. That's a point. Uh, I also bought some treats and toys to keep him entertained. I figured I could just sneak him in. <laughs> <laughs> you can sneak him in and keep him in a corner where he wouldn't bother anyone. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Boy, was I wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As soon as oh boy. As soon as I arrived at the hotel, people started noticing Pebble. Some of them thought he was cute and wanted to pet him. It doesn't deserve a point, but I'm going to give him another one okay, here. Right. <laughs> okay. He brought some, some people some joy. Some people yep. found it. Yep. Fair enough. Nice. But others were horrified and yeah, disgusted. Well, I think that's maybe what she had suggested. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he thought would happen. Yeah. They started whispering and pointing at me and Pebble, and some of them even complained to the staff. <laughs> My sister saw me and Pebble and freaked out. She came over to me and yelled at me for bringing him. She said I was selfish and irresponsible and yep. that I should leave immediately. Correct. <laughs> I tried to apologize and explain the situation, but she wouldn't listen. She told me to get out or she would call security. She also said that I was no longer her brother and that she Whoa. never wanted to see me or Pebble again. Oh, okay. the bow tie didn't do it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. enough. Yeah. 
look, we'll take one of hers off for that. That's that's quite. That's neat. pretty. That's a pretty. Uh, do you know what I find actually yeah. on a lot of like advice subreddits? Am I the asshole uh, subreddit posts? There's so many times where somebody's talking about their wedding or often hens or, or bucks being ruined that I just don't sympathize with at all. Mm. Because to me, it's not like I, I understand it's a special day. I have to get married one day and whatever, but I don't think there's, my bar is pretty high for having something happen that will ruin the day. Yeah. And I feel like people, that bar is really low Look, and they get angry at the smallest things like a raccoon coming to <laughs> 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 Obviously, there are people that are more um, sentimental than us. Yes. I, I'll, I'll give her, you ruined my wedding. Yeah, I'll okay. allow her that, yeah, okay, even though yeah. that's being dramatic. You, people yeah. want a perfect wedding. Mm -hmm. You're not my brother anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> He's a step above. <laughs> that's pretty harsh. Um, and don't want to see Pebble again. Well, yeah. come on. Yeah. Did you see the bow tie? <laughs> <laughs> um. I was shocked and hurt by her reaction. I felt like she was overreacting and being unreasonable. People, uh, Pebble. It, it's people. so weird that he thinks she's being unreasonable, <laughs> yeah. not not really grasping the fact that he was told no and he still brought the record. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I do want to get back to that point, but, okay. but let me finish this anyway. Yeah. Uh, Pebble didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah. None of this was Pebble's fault. Yeah, Let's put yeah, that yeah. out there. And, and to be fair, Pebble, Pebble didn't insist on going. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was just sitting quietly in his harness, looking adorable. He didn't bite anyone or make a mess or cause any trouble. Do you know what I like about that sentence? Is like, he could have bit someone. Yeah, but he does all the time. But for the period of time <laughs> that he was there, he didn't even bite anyone. Uh, I decided to leave with Pebble, but not before telling my... I mean, good choice, because she told you definitely yeah, yeah, to leave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but not before telling my sister that she was being a bridezilla. No. And that she owned me an apology. I also told her that Pebble was more family to me than she ever was. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Yes. Yeah, well, they did say yeah. that Pebble was like a son to him, so fun, I guess yeah. so. Um, now my whole family is mad at me. Mm -hmm. They say I was rude and disrespectful to my sister and that I should have left Pebble at home or found another solution. They say I should apologize to my sister and beg for her forgiveness. But I don't think I did anything wrong. <laughs> I think my sister's being unfair and cruel to me and Pebble. Mm -hmm. I think she should apologize to me for treating me like dirt. Okay. Just quick clarifier. Mm -hmm. Is this a joke? I <laughs> don't think so. <laughs> that is crazy. So is it possible? Uh, no, actually, I'm going to say no because it was deleted. Oh, yeah, because everyone was like, you're clearly the arsehole. Yeah, yeah. I actually got this from... Uh, there's another subreddit. Mm. Uh, fun one out there for listeners is it's called Am I the Devil, oh. which is just cross-posted. Well, not exclusively. It's mainly cross-posted Am I the Arsehole posts where they're really clearly in the wrong. Yeah. Uh, oh, I like that. I'm going to look that up. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Um, occasionally, it's in other subreddits and stuff as mm. well. There was one that I saw, just to summarize, Am I the Devil sort of posts. One guy posting posting in uh, uh, a mistake. Uh, oh, no, maybe it was a, like, women's breast cancer subreddit mm -hmm. and saying how he was really upset that his wife was getting a double mastectomy, is that what Ooh, it's called? Yeah, okay, wow. Because he was, like... Jesus. Not going to be as attracted to her. Or just... Jesus. The, hence, am I the devil? Yeah, you know? like, yeah. Like, just the worst people in the world. So, it's kind of fun. Um, uh... It, but also it lets you know that there are horrible, horrible people in the world. <laughs> anyway, getting back to this one, I wanted to say, this is my thoughts, right? Yeah. This is what I think it comes down to, is this person, OP, never had the intention to of not. their friend actually looking yeah. after Pebble. Yeah, I think he, he found the flakiest friend possible um, and kept insisting, hey, yeah. if you have an emergency, yeah. totally yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, maybe just like kept, Sending him, like, you know, when he got over to the house, presumably, to look after Bell, like, you didn't leave the stove on, did you, or anything? <laughs> didn't... Go check if you want. Yeah, you could. You can go check, and then obviously that's an emergency, so <laughs> I'll just take Pebble. Uh, yeah, I, I reckon this was all part of their plan to begin with. Um, but also, I like the idea of a cute, cute raccoon pet. So do I. To the point, though, that if someone says, hey, don't bring it, yeah. You don't bring it. Yeah, yeah. That would be my only caveat to someone having an adorable raccoon pet. Love yeah. that. Love that. 
Pop, pop, pop a bow tie on them. Fantastic. Yeah. I was trying, I, I spoke about this post with my partner and I was like, okay, I'm going to try and get us in the mentality of this person mm. because you have to take some leaps and bounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's say it was a no kid wedding. Yeah. And uh, our, well, I used her as an example. I said, and so your brother was coming and you told him not to bring his nephew, your nephew. Yeah. Which would be horrible anyway. <laughs> but, um, uh, and right at the last minute, they, the person looking after them couldn't, couldn't do it. And so they had to bring her nephew to the wedding. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's obviously her brother as well. Yeah. So we really want the brother at wedding. I was like, I think that's the closest I can get yeah, to yeah. how this person might feel. Because in that situation, we're like, yeah, I can kind of understand. Yeah. But also, like, if it's my niece or nephew, even if I had a wedding, I was like, don't want kids. My nieces and nephews are still going to be there. And I feel like everybody understands that, right? As yeah. an idea for a wedding that, like, if the kids are related Family, I to feel the... like, can be an exclusion. Yeah, yeah. It's, I feel like in, in all like, cases... You don't it's... want your friend's dickhead kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, that's what I'm going to put on the wedding invite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want your dickhead kids being there. <laughs> Obviously, my my angel yeah, yeah. nieces and nephews will, yeah. will be allowed to My be family's there. dickhead kids can be there. Um... But, uh, yeah, I, was like, I, I guess that must be the closest yeah. situation. Yeah, but not because it's a raccoon. <laughs> but no, but no it's, it's, a, it's a raccoon. Here's a thought. Mm. Should we get uh, a, a, a raccoon for the show? Yeah. Like a, a pet Reddit on Reddit podcast raccoon? Yeah. We'll obviously only see it once a week. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> yeah, if someone else could mainly keep it, it would <laughs> yeah. be good. Who's our closest listener? Let us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that'd be that'd be really good. Um, cool. All right. Let's uh, move on into Ask Reddit. Ask Reddit. This Ask Reddit was cross-posted to us by Gone Emotionally, but it was originally by Snoo19146. What's the first sign that a movie is going to be bad? Uh, you can normally tell sometimes by a directed by credit. Oh, right. Okay. Like, yep. like just if it's a terrible, like if it says, you know, a film by Michael Bay. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, it's not going to be great. Is yeah, it? it's not. <laughs> yeah. It can, it can at most be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm speaking mainly of his newest movie, Ambulance, which is pretty good. Actually, that was yeah. pretty good. It's, I was, not, it's not great. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> it, it opens by two characters talking about. The movie The Rock. And one's oh. like, you haven't seen The Rock? The Rock's the best movie ever. Also, by the way, The Rock directed by Michael Bay. Yeah, yeah. So he just had two characters talking about how yeah. sick his film is. Yeah. Okay, you haven't seen The Rock, but tell me you've seen Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> they also make a Bad Boys 2 reference later as well, which oh, is also directed by Michael okay. Bay. Oh, that surprises me that he directed that. That was actually a great film too. Bad Boys 2. Bad Boys 2. That was good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. It's pretty it's good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> like, The Shawshank Redemption is a great film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then Bad Boys 2. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Boys 2. Uh, um, uh, you know what it is? Yeah. Uh, it's it's a movie that uh, I'm going to use the Green Lantern movie as an example of this. Oh, yes. A movie that has to go long ago, there was a civilization that, and they just have to, for about five uh, minutes, explain some really dense yeah, lore. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of backstory. Be- I mean, that's because, Star Wars. Well... The thing about Star Wars, well, I would say Star Wars is an example of... Oh, they did it on the angle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm talking about like a narration that shows like a montage of all this stuff because yeah, okay. they, they haven't written it well enough to integrate it into the story. Yeah, they like, yeah. look, uh, hang on. All right. You yeah. got to know all this stuff first. All right. You ready? Uh, okay. So there's a civilization. They call the Green Lantern Corps. And they protect the galaxy above all things. But there also there was this bad guy and he was against them and he was attacking them. Uh, but he got away. It was like, how did he get away? Did he? I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, <laughs> now, now he's this guy. Now we'll stop. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's just, I feel, I feel like it's lazy. Yeah. It's like you wrote a draft and someone was like, so where did this all come from? Oh shit. Hang on. Yeah. I'll add a bit at the beginning that explains yeah. it. 
I, I do like the idea that it's that it's a writer that's come up with some... I mean, Greenland is probably a bit different, mm-hmm. uh, but a writer that's come up with some, like, incredibly rich and interesting lore and backstory for all the characters and have pitched it to a company and a production company and after, like, you know, people picking it apart and whatever, it's just become the worst yeah. movie ever because they're like, well, we can't, it'll be too long if we get all this in here. And and it what was originally maybe a fantastic and interesting story just mm-hmm. ends up being super rubbish. Look, I'll play devil's advocate for my own point here. You could argue that if you want a film that did it well, uh, the opening of Lord of the Rings is also pretty much this. Oh, like many yeah, years yeah. ago, there was this guy who made a bunch of rings and they gave these ones That's to the dwarves and these true. ones to the humans. And, yeah, and, yeah. And then also they had to do a battle with him, and then he got his hand chopped off or whatever. And then this guy he didn't steal it, and then he took it. And then this actually went into a cave for a bit. Yeah. Anyway, here's Frodo Baggins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, you, you could you could argue that it can work, That's but true. sometimes when a movie starts like that, I tend to go, uh oh. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really good one, actually, to pick up on. Mine was more even before the film has released. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I've actually mentioned this on the podcast before, uh, where, especially I think working in a cinema, we were maybe privy to this a bit more, which was if a movie came out, was coming out, and there was an excessive amount of marketing material for it you were like i think they spent a lot of money on this film yeah. it, it kind it kind of had to be in, in it had to You're tick right. a few boxes one it had to be like okay people kind of knew about the film it wasn't yeah. like something a bit obscure you could tell that they would had spent a bit of money on it with yeah. special effects whatever but then they put in heaps of marketing material and you're like if they spent the film's budget yeah marketing the film yeah like, like again. So, say yeah. it's a two hundred million dollar film. Yeah, with a two hundred million dollar marketing campaign. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you guys do not have any faith in this film. Yeah. You've realized that it's terrible, and when it comes out, nobody's going to see it. So, you convince people to see it before it get it comes out. Um, and I and I think what's uh, an interesting one on the flip side of that, and I know Disney's been sort of prone to do this. Particularly, I think for the Marvel films, was um, they wouldn't do a pre-release screening, yeah, yeah. which is usually like a go-to it. for a lot of distributors. Is like they'll get some industry people in, they'll be like, "Hey, come see our film. We're excited to release it." And that doesn't mean there's going to be a crap film. Yes. It's actually the standard. But Disney were like, "Well, standardish, let's say." Yeah. But Disney, I feel like. Sometimes we're just like, no, we know you're going to see this. Here's, and we want the money from your ticket as well. <laughs> yes. here's, here's an example of um, the differences. Uh, when they were really confident in a movie, like last year, they started screening Top Gun Maverick really early. Yeah. They yeah. played it at CinemaCon in Las Vegas. They played it at a couple of festivals. Then mm. they started doing uh, advanced screenings. They had like big premieres everywhere. And yeah. the more people that saw it, the more people were going, man, that it's was It's actually good. good. Yeah, That yeah. was really good. <laughs> and for a movie that yeah. no one was that excited about to become as big as it did, yeah, it was yeah. because everyone's like, man, that was, that was really good. It's almost because they knew people were going to have this perception of like, ah, it's just a cash grab with yeah. uh, Top Gun 2, yes. you know. On the flip side, they yeah. didn't not pre-screen Venom at all. Mm. Because even though that ended up being a big hit, I think yeah. they were preparing themselves for it flopping really right. bad. They didn't want people to come out with reviews that were Going like, like what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we've now come up with uh theoretically there is and is not reasons why they would have pre-screenings for a good well, and or bad film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, well, so um yeah, you're right. When it comes to something like Avengers Endgame, yeah. they don't pre-screen it. Yeah. So many chances for spoilers or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And you you want a zeitgeist moment where everyone sees it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. But The Pope's Exorcist, which yeah. is the new Russell Crowe movie where he <laughs> yeah. plays The Pope's Exorcist. Yeah. That didn't pre screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they know what they got. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's you don't need people being like, oh, yeah, it's shit. <laughs> you don't need but that. do you think lots of posters around for it, perhaps? Actually, I haven't even seen anything about it. So there's a few. Probably, yeah, 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 there's a few. It's it's definitely like not as uh, prevalent for me now that I don't now work in a cinema. But it was literally like, oh, you would you would get you know like X amount of posters and and standees and stuff mm-hmm. for a, a standard kind of film, uh, 
and then there'd be a delivery for one where it's like way more and you're like, yeah, I don't yeah. know about <laughs> this one. <laughs> uh, but yes. Um, let's move on into Today I Advice. So now it's time for Today I Learned. Today I learned. And also sometimes advice. This today I learned is by not a Snapple fact. Mm, fair enough. Today I learned in 2018, a Missouri deer hunter convicted of poaching hundreds of deer was forced to watch the animated film Bambi once a month <laughs> for the duration of his one year prison sentence. <laughs> wow. Um, do you reckon that they just thought, oh, he must not be aware of Bambi? Oh, that's why he's doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he hasn't seen it. We've all seen it. That's why yeah. we don't hunt <laughs> so many deer. Uh, isn't the world just an insane place? Yeah, that's We're like, so dumb. This is the type of thing that comes up and you're like, humans are still just trying to figure life out yeah. in general. Uh, it's I'm, like, we haven't nailed it. We think that we're a smart species, but really we're like, maybe we should just get somebody to watch an animated film yeah. when they do something bad. Like, honestly, <laughs> this is a bit bleak. Mm. But if you wanted him to feel the fear of, of a deer being hunted, hunt him. Hunt him. Hunt him. And he'll be like, is that what it's like? That's terrifying. That is terrible. Uh, yeah, I think that's actually what we should do. Hunt, reckon, hunt the Hunter. That would be a great TV show. I've been watching a bit of Alone and stuff. Okay. I can be really interesting to what put the poachers on an island Yep. And everybody has to go out there with their own like weapons and stuff. But it's like a lengthy process okay. and like people slowly get eliminated. I know it's like Hunger Games and stuff, but you feel a little bit better about it because you're like, well, they were killing all these animals to yeah. begin with. Yeah, okay. Mm. But are you like properly hunting them or is it like a simulation? No, oh, no, you're hunting okay, them. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, enough, yeah. to death. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be clear, to death. I actually, in this scenario though... <sighs> You get into some issues of like how, because obviously uh, some people killing so many animals really wrong. Maybe they should die, Cambo. Mm. I've declared it. But what's the line? You know? Like how many animals do you have to poach? Mm. Because deer, I would imagine, you have to poach a lot. And it did say he did hundreds. Yeah. He's like, okay, deer hunting. Look, you shoot an illegal deer, you get a fine. Yeah. To get enough deer... Yeah, you've hunted illegally to go to jail. Yeah, for a year. Yeah, you've you've poached a lot. That's yeah, hundreds. Mm. In fact, so maybe when you reach the thousands, mm. then you you go on Poachers Island. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think, but then trademark but depends, trademark that name. Do, it does. Yeah, that's true. Somebody do that for us. Uh, but then I think, like honestly, one giraffe. You're on Purchase Island <laughs> okay. straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything endangered? Anything endangered? Yeah. Purchase Island. Yeah. Um, domesticated pets. <laughs> that seems like, because that seems cruel in a weirder way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But still, maybe like two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like one is, yeah. you can't compare if, one dog with one giraffe. If giraffes someone, are so majestic. If someone kills one dog, we send him a letter. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you're on thin ice, just, mate. <laughs> just so you know. We, you know, fill out these details for Poachers <laughs> Island just in case you kill another one. That's what we'll do. That's how close you are. <laughs> Uh, I think we'd stop a lot of animals being killed this way. And have a ratings hit, so win-win. Yeah. Win-win. Okay, how about this? How many bugs, Cambo? Mm, that is, yeah, okay. Infinite, I think. Yeah, I think bugs are a free-for-all. <laughs> Screw bugs. That's what I think. But bees? We need the bees, apparently. I keep getting told. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scientists keep claiming that we need these bees. Mm. I don't need anything, mate. Yeah. All right. Everybody gets... 200 bees. <laughs> 201? Is, 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 that a, is, <laughs> is 200 enough? I would give people more bees than that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that seems like not that much. Like, that's, no, that's not like even an entire bees. hive. No, but that's the point. You don't want to kill, you don't want anybody to have the ability to kill an entire hive. Yeah. Okay. So, how many is in a hive, do you reckon? Mm. And you have to reckon. 
you can't, <laughs> you can't, you can't ping this <laughs> just as a like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In a hive, couple hundred. Oh, you reckon couple hundred in a hive? Maybe like two hundred. I reckon. Oh pretty, yeah, maybe you're right. Small. Maybe you're right. I was thinking way more. Like could be a thousand. No, maybe not a thousand. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're probably right. Maybe like two hundred to four hundred. Let's say. Oh my god, is it way more? Okay. Uh. No, this is a colony. I don't want a colony. I don't care about colonies. I want a specific just beehive. Hive. Did you say beehive? I did. Oh. I, I binged how many well, maybe bees that in is a hive. hive. That's maybe enough. What does it say? Is it like tens of thousands? Yeah, twenty to eighty. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like two hundred bees. They get the job done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, are we giving people twenty to eighty thousand bees? <laughs> uh, well, we don't want them to kill an entire one. So, like ten thousand bees. <laughs> 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 Um, and at 9,000 bees, we send the letter. We, we send the letter. We get a lot of fill in the details. Um, <laughs> we've, yeah. we've crossed that dog. We've written bees. <laughs> <laughs> we've crossed out two. We've written 10,000. <laughs> Can't you print another form? Look, we just, we send less of these. So yeah. it, it made sense to us. To... <laughs> it's really, it's not common to people who get 10,000 bees. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Anywho. Don't okay. question us too much. Here's a letter. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's move into shower thoughts. Shower thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Shower thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Shower thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Shower thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. This shower thought is by Party Five Five Five. Given pay rates, humans clearly value entertainment over necessity. For yeah. instance, football players and teachers. Yeah. 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 Have, yeah we do. Have yeah. people not worked that out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this person's just worked yeah, that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't need $20 million yeah. every movie he makes. Yeah, but I for, do. For you to go, God, Inception was good, wasn't it? I do like Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> do you reckon if we asked him, we're like, look, we've, we've first realized. Of all, first of all, we'd never get near him, but go on. <laughs> Gambo, what are you talking about? We are not young, attractive women. Yeah, well, if he gets to 9,000 bees, we're going to be <laughs> yeah, much closer. That's true. That's true. <laughs> On the back of the form, <laughs> we'll write a letter to him. Or less likely if he kills a dog. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, if Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio was to do one of those two things, mm. I really feel like he's way closer to killing two dogs than he yeah. is 10,000 bees. Um, <laughs> is that a new celebrity question? Would, you are you, you choose a celebrity them? and then you yeah. decide whether they're more likely to kill 10,000 bees or two dogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're like, Mark Wahlberg, what are you vibing? Mm. I'm vibing two dogs. Yeah. See, I was going to say bees for him for okay. some reason. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he really likes dogs. I'm sure he does, but he yeah. also seems like a bit of a, a, yeah, a ruffian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To bees. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the fun of the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, But you know what? You listening, you feel free to play this too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, yeah go to your friends. I hit, tell you what. And say, Florence Pugh, what are your vibe? 10,000 bees <laughs> or two dogs. And see what they say. Write in. Yeah. Your most favorite actor. Okay, write in. Yeah. He- what headline of the email, kill. the name of the actor. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the body of the email either says 10,000 bees <laughs> or two dogs. Yeah. Um, should we throw cats in there? Yeah. Three cats. Three, I was going <laughs> to say three cats. It's, I like cats more than dogs, but yeah. it's definitely three cats. Yeah, the, and you know what it is? It's because they're smaller. Oh, I, I thought it was because of their nine lives. Oh, yeah. You're actually killing way more cats. I was than just thinking, think. like, the mass is less. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so three cats, two dogs. Yeah. yeah okay. Dogs are a little bit bigger than cats. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You go three cats to a dog. Uh, doesn't that mean depend on the size of the dog? Like, Obviously, one. Yeah. I'm going average dog. Right, right. Like, you know, Medium sized dog. So, how about if you got one of those, like, what is that, the, the, the like mountain mastiff thing? We, we can't get this granular, though. We need to have a rule just to, <laughs> species to species. Two dogs, three cats, yeah. 10,000 bees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right in with the name of the actor and what they're more, more likely to kill. Anyway, what would you ask? Anyway, Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I would say, hey, we've. Uh, Look, we've worked out. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, egg on our face. Yeah, we've been paying teachers far less than they deserve. Yeah, we're going to take a little bit of money off you, uh-huh. but we still really like your acting. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, how much like would you do it for? <laughs> yeah. What's the least you'd act for? What's the least you'd act for? Well, I'll, I'll put it this way. When they made The Wolf of Wall Street, yep. Jonah Hill wanted to work with Martin Scorsese so desperately that he took uh, a pay cut. He got he worked at what's called yes, Scale. That's right. Which means for that whole movie, he got paid sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Leonardo oh, DiCaprio. Oh. <laughs> I mean, like six thousand dollars is like a yearly wage, right? Yeah, like yeah. an average yearly wage, mm-hmm. and you probably shoot for seven eight months. So you know, yeah, he'd be getting like an average pay. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio got paid twenty million dollars yeah. for that movie. <laughs> yeah. He was not so excited to work with Martin Scorsese that he'd take a pay cut. Yeah, yeah. And right. by the way, Jonah Hill definitely had to take that pay cut because they had to pay Leonardo DiCaprio yeah, twenty yeah. million dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh yeah, that's true. Could we get him down to nineteen? And like Would if, you, what do you do ten? This is the That's half. That's yeah. ten million dollars then going back to teachers. I mean, at this stage, surely What's he spending this money on? Because surely he's got millions and millions of dollars. Mm. Is he like, oh, good, I've got another $20 million film. I've been wanting to spend $19 million on something in particular. Yeah. like is, do, every, And that happens every time. And that happens every <laughs> time. He doesn't do movies because he likes them. Yeah. He does it because he needs the cash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, God, I shouldn't have brought this spaceship for $19 million. <laughs> yeah. And then someone walked past with a script for The Revenant. He's like, what's that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I, I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> what, do I got to sleep inside a bear? <sighs> I, mean, I don't love it, but I, I actually have something else now I want. Yeah. And I, that's also tw- 19 to $20 million. Yeah. I, I'm actually in huge debt because, honestly, I spend the money before <laughs> I get it. <laughs> it's really easy to spend $20 million yeah. at a time. Uh, yeah. But then also the problem is, um, you know, I think what we should do is... The whole problem with this system, right, breaking it down, mm-hmm. is that, well, there's millions of more teachers than there are entertainment yeah. people. Yeah, scarcity. But what if we only had a few teachers, Cam? <laughs> yeah. If there was, like, how many A-list like celebrities do you think there are? 200, maybe? Um, judging on our estimates before, I would say 20, 20 to 80,000. <laughs> But sure, two hundred. But like, 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 I'm talking about in the echelon that they're getting paid multiple millions per their film roles. Yeah. So like, Chris Hemsworth, I'm sure he gets what, like seven, eight million dollars for a film or whatever. Yeah. In that echelon, I'd say there's probably around two hundred. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Tom Cruise, yeah. George Clooney, That's whatever. True. Mm-hmm. If there was only two hundred teachers, yeah, you would have to pay them better. You'd have to pay them so much more. Mm. I reckon that's the way we do it. That's how we solve the problem. Mm. We fire First, the teachers. Fire all the teachers. <laughs> Yeah. And then employ the 200 best teachers. Mm-hmm. Also, if we're going by celebrity standards, best looking teachers as well. Oh, I was going to say, they have to be good looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. look at an ugly teacher no, all day, no, no. Camera. I won't pay attention. <laughs> um, but I think that's what it is. And then we all just go, schools are just like cinemas now. Yeah. You just go in, <laughs> you learn about history. Yeah. You go well, out. You play the movie Troy. Oh, that's why we need the actors. Oh, oh no. We've worked it out. Yeah, yeah. Guys, the system is <laughs> flawless. <laughs> it's like, it looks like they've done the research and this is actually how it works best. I, I thought... I thought... Uh, thought we got them. Yeah. The Illuminati were idiots, but they, they understand. Okay. Um, yeah, let's uh, move on to podnapping. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I'm being podnapped. Podnapping. This is Podnapping, where we nap a pod. We take a topic of conversation or a segment from another thing, and we do it ourselves. It's my week this week. It is. Uh, I, I'm doing something a little bit different. This is more akin, I would say, to a topic of conversation. Okay. Which is what we tease every time in the yeah, intro. Yeah, like never barely do. ever do. Mm-hmm. This is my fear. Yeah. Is that, that you're not informed enough. Oh. You might know the big news I'm stories. Not. You, right? should, you should see how many bees I think there are in a hive. <laughs> you, you, I'm sure are abreast of like the the big breaking stories, like you know the, Trump having to go to the courthouse to do his you know, all that kind of thing, the yeah. big stuff, you know. Yeah. But so what I've done is I've actually scoured news websites for stories I think maybe you're not across. Oh, okay. And I'm going to fill you in with maybe some um, 
some things I think are important. Yeah, but yeah. the mainstream media yeah. didn't think mainstream it was important. Media, yeah. These are stories I reckon people might have missed. Okay, but I want to do like a news program, so I've got a little news sting, and okay. uh, I'll fill you in a couple of stories. Okay, yeah, and I, your thoughts would be great. Right? Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. New York City hires its first rat czar. What? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, this is from Rory Tiz. Yes. Um, April 12th, uh, New York City's unending war with the rats has a new commanding general. Okay. Mayor Eric Adams on Wednesday announced that Kathleen Cordier, uh, an education department employee, has been appointed New York City's first ever rat czar. Oh. Part of Adams' effort to combat the growing rodent population in the country's most populated city. Uh, you wouldn't put that on your resume, would you? Well... I'll tell you what, Mike, on a resume, Mm -hmm. uh, Cordy says, you were seeing a lot of me and a lot less rats. (laughs) (laughs) Whose official title is Citywide Dictator of Rodent Mitigation. (laughs) I hope to God, and I've never wished this on a human ever, Uh but that person dies from (laughs) being eaten by rats. (laughs) Adams, who has often expressed a deep hatred of rats, posted the job last year seeking someone... Uh, somewhat bloodthirsty with a general aura of badassery and offered an annual salary between one hundred and twenty and one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Is this US? Uh yeah. Um <laughs> I'd do it. I'd do it. Yeah. Uh I can get rid of rats, mate, don't you worry. What's the how do you how do you gauge how many rats have been killed? Yeah, and how many rats have been killed before we get involved? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because I think that, like, what if you just showed up? I presumably the czar has a has a boss. Mm-hmm. If they just show up with like a shoebox full of like five dead rats, like, sure, I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm making work on it. This is progress. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. They they need to have a dumping ground for rats so you can see the progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I just I wanted you to be informed about that story. Thank you. Anyone to the next one. Giant meatball of an extinct mammoth unveiled in the Netherlands. Giant meatball yes. of an extinct mammoth yes. found in the Netherlands. Uh, no, unveiled. Unveiled. Sorry, yeah. unveiled yeah. Yeah. in the so Netherlands. So they made this. What? I will explain. There's also Why? some writers. Okay. Amsterdam, March 28th. Yeah. A giant meatball made from the flesh cultivated using the DNA of an extinct woolly mammoth was unveiled on Tuesday at Nemo, a science museum in the Netherlands. Wow. The meatball was created by Australian food cultured meat company, Vow, which promises that this is not an April Fool's joke. <laughs> <laughs> Said it wanted to get people talking about cultured meats. So that's obviously meat that's like lab grown. Yes, yes, yes. Calling it a more sustainable alternative to real meat. Yes. We wanted to create something that was totally different from anything you can get right now, Vow funder Tim Noakesmith. Uh, told Reuters, adding that the additional reason of choosing a mammoth is that scientists believe that the animal's extinction extinction was caused by climate change. All right. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That's actually really cool. Yeah. I actually really like this doubt. It was such a, that is such a weird heading. I know. <laughs> um, uh, but, but yeah, the idea of lab grown meat, I think is, is I, I, I wouldn't be surprised I can if tell in the future you, that's how the meatball, which is meat. uh, it's huge, it's, it's like the size of like a not quite as big as a basketball, but you know, like right. it's, it's quite big. Uh, the meatball was made from sheep cells inserted into a singular mammoth gene, right? Uh, and then there's also quotes here saying, uh, much like they do in the movie Jurassic Park. Oh, don't say that. Oh, that's not <laughs> good. That's not <laughs> that's good. Not, don't be judged. Don't, don't be basing any of your business ideas yeah. on what they did at Jurassic Park. Too busy worrying about if you could, whether yeah, if you yeah. should, something, something, something should. should. <laughs> <laughs> something, something life finds a way. <laughs> Monopoly game ends in samurai sword fight <laughs> with man said to be fighting for his life. <laughs> um, right. Uh, okay, uh, yep. continue. <laughs> a samurai sword fight broke out in Brussels when a game of Monopoly went wrong, according to reports. Mm-hmm. I don't think they needed to add went wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, we, we've all played Monopoly. We know yeah. how it's meant yeah. to end. <laughs> the trouble reportedly started in the forest area of the Belgian capital around 5 a.m. 
Why were they Who's playing, playing Monopoly? Monopoly so early in the morning? Uh, on, on Sunday, when residents became annoyed by four people playing the board game on the pavement outside their home. A man came okay. out of his home, apparently brandishing a stick, and got into an argument with the Monopoly players. <laughs> so see, here's the twist. is You yeah. think it's people playing Monopoly oh, against each other. Yeah. But someone was annoyed at other people playing <laughs> Monopoly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Report said the resident's son then came outside armed with a Japanese samurai sword <laughs> and a sword in its holster. During the scuffle that followed, the katana sword became exposed after the sheath was allegedly removed by one of the Monopoly players. The player tried to grab the katana and remove the holster. The son tried to get it back, the police said. Okay. Um, yeah, so these people end up having a sword fight in the middle of a street of a Monopoly game. That is insane. I've never... I always find it so... Interesting when people are like, oh, can't play Monopoly because it always ends in fights. Like, I've played Monopoly so much in my life. Me and my sister used to play it heaps, used to play it with my family. Mm. Like, never fights. There is teeth marks in the Park Lane card. Yeah. But that was <laughs> it, it depends. frustration. The, the, but like, the way it always starts is it, it really does show you how money corrupts people. Mm, yeah. Because, like, there'll be a point where, I don't know, I've got a run of whatever, mm. uh, yeah, a bunch of properties, and I've got hotels on them. And I, to me, I'm like, I've worked hard to get that. Yeah. And someone lands in it, and they're coming to me with a sob story. Yeah. I don't have any money or whatever. Like, yeah. you were going to pay yeah. every cent that you owe me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't care that you're poor. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... Uh, just quickly, I yeah, want to yeah. say, I played Monopoly for the first time in ages just the other day. On the yeah. last you were in weekend. Brussels, weren't you? And what's that? You were in Brussels. Yeah, you? I was in, in Brussels. The of the street. It escalated yeah. in a way that I didn't <laughs> think. Uh, no, and I've realized, I like I said, I've played that game plenty of times in my life. I didn't realize how flawed the game is in, in how, like, dumb and easy it is. And you can just mortgage stuff and get money and then I can mortgage it back. Like, it's just so, it's such a... It, it's such a flawed game. Yeah. And I've just never realized. Also, they don't tell you this, but you can pretty easily steal from the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're the banker. That's <laughs> that's half the fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'll have $300. Occasionally, I don't do this every time, but occasionally if I play a game Monopoly, I'll go, this is one where I'm going to see how much I can cheat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and it gets to the point where... Um, you don't have any five hundred dollars in the yeah, in the yeah, bank yeah, anymore. Yeah. People are like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I yeah. don't think anybody's been paying that much money. <laughs> my, my favorite go-to, I think I've even said this on the show before, is if someone if early in the game and yeah. someone lands on a property and go, oh, does anyone own that? Just go, yeah, it's me. Yeah, you just and call rent straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to quickly say rent and call a dollar yeah, amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rent in the ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Eng oh, this is Easter related. Uh, so a little bit dated. English police say they foiled a plot to steal Cadbury chocolates. Oh, foiled. Yes. I get it. Uh, oh, yeah. I actually didn't pick up on that. <laughs> they, they said ex extravagant plot, but I, I got rid of that. I didn't like that. Uh, this is from NPR. A local British police department is saying they helped save Easter for fans of chocolate eggs. A man was arrested in England after allegedly stealing a semi truck that contained <laughs> two hundred thousand Cadbury cream eggs oh, last Saturday. Police awesome. announced <laughs> the man, whom the Associated Press identified as thirty-two-year-old Joe Michael Paul. Campbell. Oh. <laughs> I'm not that big on cream eggs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you saw a Cadbury truck mm, and you were like, "I'll take it." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was stopped on the highway of Telford, a town in central England, shortly after the theft. Paul allegedly used a metal grinder to break through the gate and into the truck. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is like really... <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought this was maybe just no, like a this crime was not of a, passion or something. No, this was not a crime of opportunity. <laughs> yeah. This was a plot yeah. to steal chocolate. Okay. The extravagant thief took place on uh, Saturday 11th of February, the West Mercer police tweeted. Along with the cream eggs, a number of other chocolate varieties were also stolen. Yeah. All in, the seized chocolates are thought to be worth 40,000 British pounds. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> imagine moving those on the black market. I want <laughs> your cream eggs. Well, I got your cream eggs. Yeah. Uh, Paul has entered a gu guilty plea of theft of the trailer, theft of its content, and damage to a chain lock. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got one more story left. New Zealand man fined for driving to get a pie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, a Warahara man, uh, sorry, a Warahara man, 
uh, who just wanted to get a warm pie on a cold night has been sentenced for driving while suspended. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Smales, 38, was suspended That's from driving. That's a fake name. Yeah. What's your name? <laughs> Eli Smales. <laughs> S-M-A-L-E-S, Smales. Yeah. For driving, uh, he was suspended for driving for three months, uh, but drove 200 meters to the local dairy. <laughs> for like 200 meters? Yeah. Oh, that's so upsetting. <laughs> Smales, this week, appeared in the Morningsville Direct Court uh, on Tuesday, where he pleaded guilty to driving while disqualified his sixth such conviction. <laughs> <laughs> Was it to the same pie place every time? <laughs> I like that, actually. Smiles the, lawyer. the cops are just permanently stationed there. They're like, smiles, my boy. Yeah. you got to start. you got to go to another pie place. <laughs> Smiles lawyer Matthew Wright said his client made a stupid decision but asked the judge not to disqualify him again for the sake of his children. <laughs> He's a solo father of four children uh, and travels so often for work, four days on, four days off. In 2017, he improved his life after previously being in prison. He came out and got some work, brought a house, and has full care of his parent uh, of his children. Yeah, uh, Wright said he was also working on getting the vehicle roadworthy, <laughs> his full <laughs> license again. But he keeps falling over with a license suspension. <laughs> oh uh, that's really funny. He couldn't walk two hundred meters. Two hundred meters is such a short distance. <laughs> no. Could you? But do you know what? Uber Honestly, exists. I'd be the same. If I was like, okay, maybe 200 meters is too short, mm -hmm. but there's a certain distance where I'm like, yeah, sure, I'm on a suspended license, yeah. but like, it's just down the road. I can just <laughs> quickly nip down, get a pie, come back. Yeah. Who's, well, who's going to Who's going to, as if there's going to be cops that pull me The over. first five times, look, they yeah. got me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this time, I don't reckon, I don't reckon. Yeah. Uh, here I go. Do, 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 do. Woo! Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um... For our American listeners that might not understand some of these stories, I, I need to I need you to understand one how good Cadbury chocolate is. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot I forgot that Cadbury's not a yeah yeah, thing yeah. Is. yeah. No, it's really I think uh, it's by far the best chocolate. Yeah, we understood what this guy was doing. Yeah, we yeah, understood. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. And how good a hot pie on a cold night is. <laughs> a pretty hot brilliant pie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd yeah. risk it. I'd I, I'd risk it. I'd risk it. Um. Yeah, I donate blood just to get the yeah, pies. The pies <laughs> yeah. Oh, last time I donated blood, I went too early and they hadn't put the pies on. Oh there, so no! I still obviously had a nippy's milk. Yeah, yeah. And they I had went... they had a mini sausage roll, but I was furious. Yeah, yeah. I I, I went this morning and I got a pie and a sausage roll. So shove that Jesus. up your some pie people, hole. Some people know how to live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's it. That's my podnapping. Oh, yes. That's, that's uh, podnapping. All right. Now it's time for the Ask Me Anything, where listeners of the show, just like you, listener, can write in and ask us anything you want. Go on here from Zimbo. It's a short and sweet one. Yes, it's a short, short one. Nose hair wax kit. Make sure you record video as well. Perhaps whoever loses a trivia contest has to do it. Your pain is our pleasure. Um, also, the subject of the email was podnapping. Well, yes, yes. Which I didn't put in there. Yeah, right. Yeah, I feel like people got that. Yeah, yeah. unless they've never listened to the show before. Well, they were like, true. I don't They were like, as far as I know, podnapping is topics of conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah okay. Hmm. This is unfair. Yes. I think because I said in a previous episode, which I assume is how Zimbo came up with this, mm -hmm. was that I'm getting nose hairs, mm. and you're like, well, no, nah, not yet for me. So I think this is Look, more of a painful thing for me. I say that, but they're definitely up there. I mean, I, yeah, everybody's yeah. got the nose. I, I don't reckon I'd pull it out and go, huh? Yeah. Oh, that was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I think that it would be painful for both of us. Yeah, you might yeah. just have a, a slight bit more pain. If yeah, you a little bit maybe. more hair in the nose. Um, look, we'll put that at the bottom of the list. Yeah. If I'm real desperate and I'm not far off, if, if <laughs> then BuzzFeed do is a... down one week, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> then, uh, then we might have to do a nose hair wax kit thing. Uh, I've got another one. This is from Hazza. Gentlemen cunts. I'm so glad Hazza wrote in to ask about Cousin Rowan because I've been meaning to ask about Sam the Sound Guy. Oh, may you rest in peace. Oh, oh no, I'm giving oh, it away. No. <laughs> I've started listening to the back catalogue and found hashtag keep Sam in a job. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that one didn't take off. Uh -huh. Might I suggest a reunion? Yeah. Perhaps you could find a pod napping somewhere in there. Well, Wait, look, you're meant to come up with a pod napping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so people know Sam is a member of Camber on the Fuckheads. Ah, uh, yes, he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was. He right, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but oh, this is going to be so. Oh boy, we need to touch wood or something. Yeah. It's going to be one of those times where, God forbid, something happens to Sam. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, we've just released that episode. <laughs> Obviously, we won't take yeah. it down. That's like we should state Sam is, is alive and well. <laughs> I, I sent Sam a, a, a message this very day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. By the way, because Nelson Loki cheated, I can't, well, no, has his has his bring up some good points. Actually, some, that's some strong language. I think mm-hmm. it should be better known as Nelson won asterisk. <laughs> 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 I'll accept that. Yeah, I can't I'll get. accept that. Uh, by the way, because Nelson... New, new t-shirt, Nelson won asterisks. N- Nelson won Asterix. <laughs> I think we need another secret words podnapping. I know it was torturous for the two of you, but it was absolutely <laughs> hilarious to listen to. I bet a few of us could come up with some good words on the Discord. Yep. Love you guys, Hazza. Oh, boy. That episode, I really cannot stress <laughs> how painful that was to get through. I actually went back and listened to it. I don't always listen back to our episodes, but I was like, I need to listen to that one. Yeah. And um, I actually think that from how I felt at the time to how it came out, yeah. it doesn't sound like I was in as much pain as I truly was. Because the whole time my brain is racing, I'm like <laughs> losing track of what you're saying yeah. as we're having a conversation. If a big word comes out, you stop listening to the rest of the yeah, sentence. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, is that, should I write that down? I don't know. How, what did Gambo how, say? And how do you spell that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but as a, so. as, a, as a great man once said, your pain is our pleasure. Yes, so. uh, that's true. So yeah, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Maybe a little bit further down the line. Yeah, yeah. We'll, when we'll, when we've forgotten the pain. We'll give it a go. <laughs> yeah. That's just above... Pulling our nose. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it is. Uh, all right, that's it. Loser of the word sneak has to wax that nose. <laughs> yeah. The worst podcast I've ever done. Oh, my God. Uh, that's it for another episode. Thank you for writing in Zimbo and Hazza. Uh, if you would like to write into us, you can do so. Reddit podcast, R-E-A-D-I-T podcast. You can also... Reach us? Reach us. At... Um, <laughs> You, I, said, you said word sneak was hard, but it seems like regular podcasting is just hard. Just regular podcast out. Hold on. Let me just... Can I just redo the Holland? Please. We'll edit all of this out. They'll never know. Okay. <clears throat> That's it for this episode. Thanks for writing in, Zim- Zimbo and Hazza. <laughs> if you would like to write in this, you can do so. Red podcast, R-E-A-D-I-T podcast at gmail.com. You can also reach us at Facebook, not Twitter, <laughs> and our subreddit, yep. and Discord. It's in the show notes. They're right all under, right R-E-A-D-I-T right podcasts, right under the link for except merch. the Discord. It's not called our Reddit podcast. I've got to find a new way of doing this. The end bit. Because mm-hmm. you confused me. Because now I've got to say not Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Well, because we still have the Twitter account. <laughs> so people might be confused. <laughs> don't if go I, to it. Don't if go I don't, to it. Yeah. If I don't mention it at all, they might just be interested to know if we've got one. Yeah. I was saying what if, specifically... What if, what, what if we drop it all together from the, the outro, but then we'll change the our Twitter bio to be, don't come here. <laughs> don't come here. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like that. Also, uh, rate and review the show. I'll rate and review the show and stuff. And uh, thanks for listening. We will see you later.